All right, in the last example, we had to restrict the domain of g of x equals x squared to ensure that its potential inverse was indeed a function. We need the potential inverse to be a function, so we need to pa it to pass the vertical line test. And if you translate it back to the original function, the original function, the one you're trying to invert, has to pass the horizontal line test. So I just want to quickly go through these two tests, show you a couple of examples for those of you who haven't seen them before. So if every vertical line intersects a graph at one point, so that one point would give you the value of the function, or no points, that would mean that the, the x value is not part of the domain, then this graph represents a function. All right, so what you're trying to avoid is a situation like we had over here, where one vertical line hits the graph in two or more um, values, points, and then you would have multiple values for that x value. All right, so let's look at these two functions. In this example, we're asked to determine whether the following graphs represent functions. We're going to use the um, vertical line test. So here, if I start drawing my vertical lines, every single one of them needs to intersect in one or no points. And so it passes the vertical line test. And so, yes, it is a function. All right, next one. If I look at this case, when I draw a line, it would hit in two different points. That's not allowed. That would mean the function would not be defined at that point. And so it fails the vertical line test, and so no, it is not a function. All right, to test whether something is a function, you use the vertical line test. To test whether a function has a function for an inverse, then you use the horizontal line test. If every horizontal line intersects the graph of, of a function at one point, or no points, I feel like I need an S here, then the inverse of this function is a function. All right, so it would have a nice inverse. Let me put the inverse underlined because it's key here. All right, so let's try it on example 1.1.6, determine whether the following functions would have an inverse function. Right, so I'm going to look at horizontal lines now, and I want to make sure that each horizontal line either doesn't intersect the graph at all or intersects it at a single point. All right, so this one, it passes the horizontal line test, and so it is it has an inverse function. If I flip it, that graph will pass the vertical line test and will be a function. Now for this one, I just need to graph one, whatever I want. As soon as it hits more than once, it would fail the horizontal line test. And so it does not have an inverse function. Notice that some lines do intersect in no point, so one point. This line, for example, doesn't intersect at all. As soon as one horizontal line hits more than once, you're done. No chance that you get an inverse function.